anybody that has a high-speed internet connection, or maybe even dial-up, will know that this Milwaukee Tool video has been making the rounds and has been reaching the highest levels of the tool industry. And you can see my rear handle, seven and a quarter, circular saw, was acting kind of on the fritz. Matter of fact, I was surprised because up until then, there was no signs of this saw not working. It wasn't an incremental thing. It was working and then boom, it wasn't working. But it seems the Legion of Red didn't want to hear it. They said that I should file an ear service claim or call 1-800-SAW-DUST. And it almost seemed like deja vu. It was like, wait a minute, I'm the guy that tells all of you that. So I took your advice because it was great advice, I must admit and filed an e-service claim. And what I wanted to answer in this video is Milwaukee's warranty and repair service any good? Let me give you the timeline. Here it goes. September 28th is the day the saw broke and I shared that video. Now, because of time commitments, I wasn't able to file for e-service call 1-800-SAW-DUST. I was able to do it on the 29th, which was a Friday. Filed for e-service, and here's the thing. Communication was clear, and I like that. Whether good, bad, or indifferent. And referring to the scary part, I was indeed met with a page when filing for e-service saying, or asking, or just telling me, Will this be covered under warranty or is this service chargeable? And with the description that I provided to Milwaukee Tool, they said that the repair could possibly cost $195, but they needed to get the tool in their hand and then evaluate. I wouldn't be under any obligation possibly to go through it, but what would that mean then once they had the tool? And if it was going to cost me $195, would I not be returned my broken saw? Would there be another way to fi fix it? Would I get it back? So it was a little sketchy, but I, I decided to press on, even though I could potentially be charged. I was met with a confirmation page which told me the next steps, which were to box up the saw, print out my prepaid slip for shipping, travel to the closest FedEx location, and then uh, slap that bad boy on there and send it on its way. Once I did that, on September 30th, I was met with another email. Got confirmation that my tool was shipped from FedEx and it was on its way to Milwaukee Tool. Until October 4th, where Milwaukee Tool let me know that they received my saw and that they would need to do their evaluation. On October 6th, got an email that the tool was in repair. Was it a bait and switch? Did they get the saw in their hands and then were they going to ask me once it was repaired for a credit card number to release the saw back to me for it to be shipped? I didn't know. These are some concerns that I think people have and I have. But a couple of days went by. Matter of fact, it was a few days, October 9th, when Milwaukee Tool let me know that my repaired saw was being shipped back to me. At this point, there has not been any mention of money needing to pay them. The tool was within its five-year warranty. I didn't expect to have to pay anything because it was under warranty, but I was met with that page that told me I could potentially be charged, so I was still concerned. But it was being shipped back, and I was happy about that. Then on October 11th, I got a glorious notification. My tool was delivered. And we have our saw here. I will say, it boxed up much nicer than the box that I sent it out in. So it's nicely bubble wrapped. Here's our saw. Now, here's the deal. When I was boxing up to ship out the saw, it told me to remove any blades or accessories. I didn't do that. I left my blade on the saw and it seems that it is not on my saw anymore. The other thing is, is that if you were going to be using some type of guide, rip guide, skate plate, you're gonna to wanna to remove all of that because there's the potential that it could be lost in transit. So they did take my blade off, but they returned my blade in a plastic bag. 
I appreciate Milwaukee Tool returning it, but I'm thinking that it's time to replace this blade. Anyway, let's just say it didn't have some missing carbides on it and it just needed a thorough cleaning. What you're gonna wanna do is go to this video right here. Go and check that out. For my next saw blade, I've chosen Diablo's next generation framing and demolition blade. This is their demo demon. It's made to cut clean wood really well, but if it's met with stuff like nails, screws, some metal, it's gonna cut right through it like a hot knife through butter. We're gonna have a separate video talking all about this blade. We gotta get it on the saw first though to make that video, so let's do it. Righty Lucy, lefty tighty. We're gonna pull off our little clamp there. Okay, and we're gonna engage our diamond here. Hey, Diablo, why don't you make a worm drive specific saw blade in this demo demon? This way we could have your fancy lettering on the outside. We could show it off a little bit better. That would be fantabulous. Got a fully charged six amp hour battery. We'll tell you, I, I like to run the, the full size 12 amp hours in this, but I will say I also like to run the sixes in here because it gives it just the right amount of oomph with the benefit of some weight savings. Now, the moment of truth. Well, it seems to be back and working normally. Before, we would have to jump start it. It wouldn't even matter about cutting through wood. It couldn't even start to spin its blade under no load with a fully charged battery under its own force. So that's great news. What I find amazing is Milwaukee Tool had this saw back to me in less than two weeks. From door to door in 11 days total. Pretty doggone good service, but did it come at an expense? This is the packing slip, but it says repair warranty. It says LMR price. Well, so is that the, the listed manufacturer's repair price or something? Hey, there. Would be $195 to make this repair, which Kinda has me scared. It needed an electronics assembly, 20, 80, 30, 20. Unit price for that electronics assembly, $246.79. Is that not mind blowing? That's, that's really odd. It also says quantity one, an on off switch. That was broken as well, $16.91. Then another quantity of one says shop supplies and disposal, $7.75. Quantity five, we got a Lab B row project category. I have no idea what that even means. Unit price, it says $6. Total price to Moa is $0. So they fixed it free of charge. Here's my only concern. I believe this saw came out in 2019. We are in 2023. So it was getting kind of close to the warranty being expired. If it made it a little bit longer, would it have cost me $195? Potentially it would have, but luckily it did not. And if you like getting your Milwaukee tools fixed for free, then smash the like button. It's free for you to do. It doesn't cost you a dime. Just like this warranty service from Milwaukee. Plus, it gives you good karma. Kind of like them fixing this all gave good karma because I was like, wow, I can't just make the short video where you saw it broken and not make a follow-up video when they deliver exemplary service. Because they deliver good karma, I'm delivering good karma. Listen, everybody, I appreciate each and every one of you taking this journey with me to getting my Milwaukee rear handle search saw repaired. And I hope to see you all on the next one. Like this next one. It's gonna be more Milwaukee tools. You're gonna to love it. I'm gonna go test this saw through wood gonna be on the next video. You're gonna see how it actually runs. Yeah.